game shows. Programs in which contestants compete in a game by answering questions or solving puzzles for money or prizes. The first television game show ever, Spelling Bee, aired in 1938, helping to establish the now well-known quiz show format. After this show's remarkable success, production of game shows rapidly increased and raised the stakes exponentially by offering cash prizes, with the top winners in the 50s earning about $64,000 compared to the boom of the 1980s when winners were bringing home million dollar cash prizes. My name's Anthony Padilla, and today I'm gonna to be sitting down with some of the most iconic game show winners to learn what it's really like to win big money in front of millions of eyes on national television. Has this large influx of cash allowed these game show winners to enjoy blissfully comfortable lives? Or has the brief abundance of fame and fortune left them tormented with a gaping void in their heart? Hello, Ken. Hey, Anthony, how you doing? Amber. Hello. Chris and Chandler. Hey, what's, hey up? what's up, man? Thank you so much for coming on here and teaching me about the world of iconic game show winners. My pleasure, <laughs> that is my one specialty in life, so I got you. What do you guys consider yourselves? Uh, game show winners, uh, very strategic geniuses? Good at being dumb and lucky, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> That's all we could really hope for in life, right? I usually say professional ex game show contestant. A lucky bitch, honestly. Lucky bitch. <laughs> what game show were you on? And can you describe what what made your appearance there so iconic? I fulfilled a lifelong dream. I had tried out for Jeopardy, my favorite quiz show as a kid. And I got a phone call uh, inviting me to be on the show. And they had just removed the limit on winners. And I was on the show for six months in a row. I was on the show <laughs> for 75 straight games. I was on The Price is Right when I was in college. I watched that show religiously since I was uh, like 10. So it was my dream to just go be in the audience. So you had no idea going in that day that you might be pulled up to, to be on the show as a contestant? I mean, you can see in the clip, I'm like, is this real? <laughs> We were on Mr. Beast's YouTube channel game show, and I had a really bad losing streak for about a year and a half. You were the underdog that everyone was rooting for to win because you had been appearing on this game show over and over and over and over again, yeah. losing every single time. People always ask us, they're yeah. like, you've got to be scripting this. Chandler can't be that bad. And we're like, no. <laughs> You're like, I am not going to lose $1.9 yeah, million dollars on purpose. <laughs> no one does that. Before we learn more about the world of iconic game show winners, I walked away with two and a half million dollars. Who knew doing janitorial work would eventually evolve into you literally owning a private eye? This is literally the most money I've ever heard of in my lifetime. People around you want you to do some dumbass thing. I want to take a quick moment to mention that Adam and Eve is sponsoring this episode. I'm really thankful for sponsors supporting this series so we can have the freedom to experiment and test our luck by taking risks with this channel. Anyway, toys, toys, toys for 200, please. This online retailer for erotic gifts donates 20% of profits to help fight the spread of HIV around the world. What is adamandeve.com? Yep, use code PADILDO on adamandeve.com to get 50% off one item plus free shipping in the US and Canada. That's huge. All of you who took the time out of your day to use our very lovely code the last time they sponsored us, encouraged Adam and Eve to come back and sponsor us again. And basically what I'm saying is your help directly supports this series and it shows. Now back to learning about the world of iconic game show winners. How did you react when you won? It came down to the last question and they played the tense music. And like when my answer was revealed, I was just, I remember this overwhelming rush of relief. Uh, yeah. That no matter what happened now, I was gonna be like a Jeopardy champion for the True. rest of my life, you know? And that was just after the one game, not after the 74 other wins. But nothing's as good as the first time because after that it really was just like, well, I already have my dream. Like I'm a Jeopardy champion. I can put that on my tombstone. It was crazy. I could not believe that. But also in a weird way, like I could believe that. I felt like it was like, I knew subconsciously, like when I started watching the show a hundred million years ago, it was like it was meant to be. So it was wild that it was happening, but at the same time, you were just fulfilling the prophecy. That's what it felt like. I was fulfilling the prophecy. <laughs> I ran away, screamed, ripped my shirt in half, and then I ran back and hugged uh, 
it, it was Jed that picked my name out of yeah. the box. Yeah, pure unadulterated bliss. Also, when you yeah. win something, I don't know why, it's like a natural reflex to just start running. Yeah. I, it's <laughs> unexplainable. What did you win? A trip to Italy, two Vespas, a year supply of ice cream, which is hilarious because that's my favorite food. Um, <laughs> a year supply of ice cream. What did you do with yeah. the year supply? Did you eat all the ice cream? Oh, I ate it. <laughs> <laughs> Three to four hundred thousand dollar range, maybe. I, I could be totally wrong. I, I can't remember exactly, but it's somewhere yeah. around I'm that. To a point where I'm just winning money, and it's I, so much I don't even remember. Yeah, I don't even remember. <laughs> How about you, Chandler? Uh, you got yeah, an island, bro. Yeah, I got an island. I bought this entire island. I have ten challenges, and we have ten people. And the last one of you to leave this island keeps it. I love that you can just so casually say that you want an island, that you own an <laughs> island now. Youngest island owner. Are island you the owner. youngest island owner? Maybe. I don't know. Don't fact check it. Let's just know. keep saying it. Yep. I walked away with two and a half million dollars. They don't have lovely parting gifts anymore. They don't give you rice or or anything when you lose. So I had to settle for a seven figure check. That sucks. Just cold hard cash and just a lot of it. Is it also true that you are the highest earning game show contestant ever with over five million dollars in wins? I think that's true. Because Jeopardy, uh, you know, invites people back for tournaments from time to time. So I've been back on the show uh, three or four times, uh, and I've finished in the top two like each time. Did you have any secret strategy to to win or just to to last longer on the show? One thing that's really important to me is the rhythm of Alex's voice. Like the way really? he reads the clues is is what determines when you buzz having grown up with him just reading tens of thousands of clues to me, because he's had the job for 38 years. Yeah. Um, like I can just, I know that rhythm just in my head, like like my own heartbeat or something. Can you imitate the rhythm of his voice? Is it like, ba 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 da 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 Wait, ba 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 What do you think it is about Mr. Beast show that sets it apart from other game shows? It really feels like the viewer is like, going through the challenge themselves yeah. like you're you're part of the video you're hanging out with us you know anybody could pe compete in it like when you watch jeopardy like you'll see some questions and you'll just have no absolute yeah. clue but People you run. sit there, you watch it and you're like i could sit in a circle for 25 hours if the prize exactly. was 30 grand yeah. you know what i mean have you ever thought about this show as a game show it's a game show but it's like a new genre of game show i feel like it's transcended beyond just people who like to watch game shows it's it's yeah. a combination of like reality tv and then like you know like survivor but then also a combination of jeopardy and the combination of price is right it's like a little bit of all the best aspects of yeah. every other game show out there wrapped into one while feeling accessible like anyone could be a part of it someday. What a beautiful <laughs> spoken sentence. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Take it do you remember what the casting process was like for the show? The tickets are free. I didn't know that, which was great right. because I had no money. So uh -huh. free tickets, but you do have to show up at like 4 a.m. <laughs> you wait in line for like ever. And on your way in, there's this guy who's like, I didn't know what he was doing, but in hindsight, I'm like, oh, he must have been like reading the audience because they'd be like, so how excited are you to go in? And people would be like, woo, or whatever. And I like basically started to cry. <laughs> I was like, oh, uh, I'm so excited. So you didn't know you were being cast when you were being cast. Yeah, they basically were like, how oh, you know, what do you want? Do you know the show, blah, blah, blah. And then they just kind of seat you inside. Well, he was doing janitor work for us yeah, yeah. and Jimmy wanted to do a challenge video and we needed four people. And he was like, Chandler, do you want to try and, and do it? And that was Chandler's like yeah. big break. Really? You were doing janitorial work before you were just yeah, swooped was, into a challenge? Yeah, I was like, set up, clean up, shop. <laughs> so who knew doing janitorial work would eventually evolve into you literally owning a private island? That's a great <laughs> clickbait like article title. <laughs> From janitor to island owner, find out how. How quickly after meeting someone do you end up talking about your win? I try not to do it. Do you avoid bringing that up because you don't want to feel like you're gloating? I think yeah. on some level, you know, really any normal person can like, can know stuff. You just have to mm -hmm. try and be interested and, and pay attention. Like I don't sit at home reading the encyclopedia, but like if somebody mentions something in a conversation that I don't know, like I just, I leap at it like a shark because um, right. I'm just wired that way, I guess. I guess I'm just curious about everything. Like if, if someone mentions a subject that I don't know about 
the, the easy impulse is to say like, oh, that's hockey. I don't like hockey. I'm more of a baseball guy. I think it's more interesting if you're like, oh, hockey, that's the one I don't really know about. Like, tell me how that works. You're kind of naturally curious about everything. If I'm interested in something, it just happens to stick. Yeah, I thought about that a lot as a kid. I was like, how can I remember 151 Pokemon names, but I can't remember the, the, the capitals to every state? It's because I just didn't care about it. Like the memory works just fine if you could find some way to trick yourself into be interested in a thing. Do you have any tips to trick yourself into being interested about things? I think stories help. You know, people are, are we're, we're prone to stories. We like narratives and, uh, and that's how you remember stuff, not as a series of flashcards. How has your life changed since this massive win? To get like all that cash, I was like, oh, this is literally the most money I've ever heard of in my lifetime. So I did was not it, it life-changing? Oh, I studied abroad. I literally lived in Switzerland for six months and like traveled the world with it. I mean, I went everywhere. I spent every single penny um, in six months, but it was worth it. But I did get a lot of chances just to try stuff. Somebody asked if I wanted to, to write a book and I was like, sure, I'll try writing a book. And so I get to do stuff that I'm interested in. And I really, the greatest gift for me was just the time. Like I, I wasn't at the office from nine to five when my kids were little. Right. And, and that was huge. So I didn't miss them growing up. I got to go to the, the third grade recorder concert <laughs> and it was great. Like I owe it all to Alex Trebek. Like I was, I was a, I was an okay dad just because of, of Jeopardy. Shout out to Alex Trebek. I know you're going to be watching this episode. Actually, I don't, but you should. Was your confidence level boosted after winning? That was one of the first real big moments in my life where I was like, oh my God, like you can actually attract literally anything, even if it's um really insane. Like, I'm gonna right. win this game show that I've always watched. It was factually part of your confidence and your charisma that yeah. got you recognized out there before you went in, which got you called up on stage, and then just having the confidence to do it actually ended up resulting in it happening. I mean, that just was one of the moments that really made me be like, wow, you can actually do anything, even if it sounds crazy. Yeah, like at first I was like, I don't even know if I'm if I'm good at this game. And it happens every time I go back on the show. I'm like, well, I'm a little older. Mm -hmm. I've forgotten a lot of stuff. I'm probably slower. This brain slower. ain't doing what it used to. It really is good to learn about yourself that you're that you're good at something. Because like, I think my assumption was that I wasn't good at stuff and so I didn't try stuff. It's helped me, I think, since Jeopardy to, mm -hmm. to maybe assume I, I, I can try something or at least I won't know till I try. Has the attention and fame from your wins and appearance on the show uh, affected your life in any way? I mean, we get noticed a lot. It, but it's not that like it's a bad thing. For me, I just feel bad for the people with me, like my wife and her family. And right. Stuff. Yeah. They're not being like anyone yeah, around exactly. me. Because they yeah. just have to sit around and watch it happen. And I know that's probably so yeah. awkward for them. Right. And they didn't sign up for it. It was you that yeah, signed exactly. up for it. I got recognized in a grocery store once. <laughs> Was they someone like, are you like, the girl that won Price is Right? Dead ass. I was Whoa. like maybe two months after it like yeah. aired. And this yeah. random woman was like, excuse me, did you win the Price is Right? And I was like, oh my God, yes. yes. <laughs> and she was like, that's so cute. Me and my husband like thought it was the cutest. You were so great. Like, congratulations. I was like, I am a celebrity. <laughs> like, I there was that no was turning moment. back. That yeah, moment, like, paparazzi, life is forever sacrificed to the media. Do you feel a lot of pressure to live up to the, your, your title as greatest Jeopardy player of all time? I do, and for a long time, you know, I'd get ba asked back on the show for tournaments, and for like three or four times in a row, I finished second. And I was always like, oh, you know, it doesn't even, you know, most people would be overjoyed to finish second. And in my case, I just feel like somebody took me down. You know, somebody yeah. was gunning for me particularly and they mm -hmm. got me, you know, I, I couldn't quite get there. Well, so much of your time on Jeopardy was about being number one. So I can see how, how anything less than that could feel like you were knocked down a peg. But I'm a competitive person, you know, mm -hmm. and I mm -hmm. and I wanted to win some of those that I that I was close to. Um, so when I was on in the spring and they had their greatest of all time tournament and I ended up winning and uh, and I just realized I couldn't top it, you know, like that's as good as it gets. And I decided I, I'm, I think I'm done. You're officially retired. I'm hanging up my jersey. I, I, I just don't see how I could beat it. And I and I know in my head I am getting dumber every day, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a plan for what you'd spend your your winnings on? Pay off whatever I gotta pay off. 
I used to build my first house, though. You bought your first house? Well, we built it, actually. You built your first house with your yeah, wins? Yeah. It was out there. Yeah, just me. <laughs> Only me. Hammer and nail. <laughs> Did, were you out there building it yourself at all? No, no, I'm not very skilled with woodwork no. or anything. No, they don't no. always go hand in hand. Not, not always. Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Oh. Ask Jesus. It still doesn't seem real. Like I was winning and winning and the number below my face would kind of get wider. Yeah. But it yeah. didn't seem, it just seemed like a video game score. You know, it didn't actually seem like dollars you could spend. Right. And then one day after the show, Alex wanted to do a thing and he pulled like a, a, a piece of paper from his pocket and handed it to me after the show. And it yeah. was like a seven figure check. Oh my God. And I'm just like, what, I don't even, what do I do with this? I've got to go change my <laughs> pants and play two more games. So I had to like hand this million dollar check to my buddy. You always think, what if I had a million dollars? And then like you do the math and you're like, oh, you actually can't live on interest from that. Like you're going to have to have a job, Ken. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So the money was just kind of boringly invested for the kids. So you're telling me that you reinvested the money and saved it for your future and your kids and your family rather than buying a yacht? Isn't that awful? I'm a, <laughs> I'm a terrible role model. Like I know you're joking a little, but like people <laughs> did get disappointed. Really? People were actually disappointed? Yeah, people around you want you to do something. Dumbass thing, you know, that's what I found. <laughs> when I was on Letterman, the guest ahead of me was Alec Baldwin. And I remember him like in the makeup chair next to me and he's like, good for you, good for you winning all that money. Here's what you do. Don't give a penny of it away. Spend it all on yourself, just buy jet skis. Like <laughs> Riley Jupy wants to know how much of the show was rigged or staged or if it truly is just based on luck and skill. All that time that you see us where it says three days, that we've been in a challenge for three days, that is three days is I was three away days. from my wife and kids. A lot of people think it takes us 15 to 30 minutes to film because that's how long the video is, but literally, yeah. like, oh, so. if we're there for 72 <laughs> hours, we're there for yeah. 72 hours. Yeah, more. yeah. And I was actually in an episode too, and I won some money, my team won some money with this uh, airsoft balloon yeah, battle yeah. royale thing, and I can confirm it's real. That money actually did make it into my bank account. <laughs> I was surprised. I was convinced that it wasn't gonna actually happen. I was like, there's no way Jimmy's gonna actually send this money. Like I'm his friend. There's no reason he actually does need to send it to me. I just had a good time. But then it just popped in there. I was like, holy. That's how it used to be. We used to get do videos where we give away money to people and people would be like, this isn't real. I don't believe you. And we'd have to take 20 minutes to explain yeah. to them how it's real. And now we're like, Here's 50 grand and they're like, yeah, yes. woo, thank you. Now there's no question though, because the, the show has kind of proven itself. Cause exactly, if yeah. it was fake, everyone would be coming out about it now. We wouldn't be what we are if it was fake. Literally 100% of it was real. When I say I was a random bitch from the audience, like I was a <laughs> random bitch from the audience. <laughs> like, when I won the like $500 for like guessing yeah. the exact right price and he gives you money, like cash. Yeah. I took it and put it in my pocket and then they were like, no, like we're gonna like send you a check. So they make me get it <laughs> You're like, you don't get to just bring <laughs> home the cash. Yeah, they They're like, like, that's no, just no, a no, prop. No. Yeah, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's true. People assume Jeopardy must be rigged in some way. Like one time I was wearing a tie that kind of strobed on camera, like it had that fritzy fuzzy look. Yeah. And they were like, oh, just go to this um, this mirror and change your tie. And so I went to the up, upstage to this one mirror, but it was like the same mirror where Alex adjusts his tie. Yeah. And people freaked out. They're like, no, Ken can't be at that mirror. That's Alex's mirror. What if there had been clues on the on Alex's podium? Like it was a huge like nuclear emergency that I was adjusting <laughs> my tie in the wrong mirror because they really take security so seriously. Like like that mirror somehow holds Alex Trebek's knowledge, and just by looking at your own reflection through it, you're going to acquire that. Yeah, if you break the mirror, Alex suddenly like turns into a 110 year old man or something. Jenny Ray wants to know how much in taxes you had to pay on your prizes. There's no special rule for for game show mm. winnings like it's that's just as if you'd won it in vegas so basically you just end up paying as if your job had paid you two and a half million dollars that year you can't deduct okay. expenses because it's not really your job damn but what about the to and from the jeopardy game right I mean, what about the encyclopedia i bought right um, whatever the highest tax bracket is that year that's what you pay but they don't deduct any of it which could be like 20 to 30 percent of the overall price right yeah, I think that year the highest tax bracket was low 30s, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, the, you got to keep that in mind. It's mm -hmm. um, you, you don't get to, you can't spend every cent. Senior Cloaker wants to know if anyone in your life kind of tried to become closer 
friends with you after you won? In total, I probably won like maybe fifteen thousand dollars. Like when I came away from it all, maybe like fifteen thousand right. dollars, like cash. Yeah. So, I mean, you yeah. know, in LA, that's what one month rent. So it's like, it's not, <laughs> It's not Sad, that money. <laughs> but true. When we first started blowing up, like I had a lot of people from like my original high school, like, yo, like if you ever want to hang out, like I'd be down to be in a video and stuff like that. And like, <laughs> it, it really like, yeah. you, you got to watch out and see who's just really trying to be your friend and who just wants to climb the ladder and get noticed. They're like, hey, if you ever want to hang out, I'd love to win a couple hundred grand. That would be, yeah. that would be super If you super ever chill. have a hundred grand just in a briefcase <laughs> on the floor, like you I'll take it. Take it. Pyro Vita wants to know how long the I'm a winner feeling lasted. Or did that, did that wear off pretty quickly? It does. I mean, on Jeopardy, after the show ends, you know, there's a there's kind of that awkward chat with you and Alex as the credit roll, credits roll. But then as soon as they clear, uh, like you've got like, as fast as you can get a new outfit on, you go back and do another game. Oh, right. And then you're you're immediately in the mindset of, I don't know if I'm going to win or not. Right, like you, you can celebrate for like 30 seconds and then it's like, okay, we gotta go. Uh, potty break, put on a new jacket, and right. then uh, as soon as Alex gets a new suit on, we're just gonna go again. And then Alex pretends it's a new day. He'll be like, on yesterday's program, you know? <laughs> right, right, But it, was, right. it wasn't yesterday, it was like 10 minutes ago. Yeah. Um, so you really have no time to celebrate at all. What is it about being a game show winner that's brought you the most joy? The money! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sometimes it's true. That was a priceless experience, but um, sh yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't rehearse this. What do you think the biggest misconception is about game show winners? That they're not like us. It's not true at all. It's just really just paying attention to what happens in daily life, like reading the back of a cereal box or something you see on a billboard or a, a, you know, a mention on a TV show. I mean, you can, you can learn something new every hour of every day. Every moment is an opportunity to absorb knowledge. You don't have to go out and like, specially make some time to stress yourself out and, and learn. Quick, tallest mountain. Mount Everest, 25,000 feet. Quick, largest land mammal. Uh, the African elephant. Qu quick, the meaning of life. Tip 20% or more. Those people work hard. Wrong, there is no meaning to life. I actually have a parting gift for you. It's a best <laughs> interviewer shirt, just like the one you see me oh modeling so beautifully today, which you could get at padildoshop.com. But for you, I will ship this to you for oh free. My God. Hell yeah. Thank you. I feel like I won a game show again. All right, you got five seconds to shout out or promote anything you want directly in the camera. Go. I guess if you want to check out my YouTube channel that isn't me winning the prices right, Amber Scholl, boom. Shout out to Mr. Beast Gaming, subscribe. Also register to vote. I'm at Ken Jennings on Twitter. Check out my new trivia game, Half Truth, that I did with Richard Garfield of Magic the Gathering or my podcast, Omnibus. Subscribe to Anthony Padilla. <laughs> George wants you to. Do it for George. Me. It'll make me so happy. Maybe you too will win a game show if you subscribe. Thank you so much. Ken, I feel like I understand the world of being a legendary, iconic game show winner just a little bit more. Well, this was a lot of fun, Anthony. Thanks for having me. I'm flattered. After spending the day with these iconic game show winners, I've come to understand how this type of success, while overwhelmingly positive, could be a double-edged sword. Not everyone anticipates winning massive amounts of money on a game show in their lifetime, but these winners have done so humbly and graciously which speaks to their character more than anything. See you later, bye guys. Press, press like, 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 press. I was doing a show on the Game Show Network where it turned out the fastest way to do the buzzer was to kind of hold it in your lap and go, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and they told us to stop because you've got three people clutching at their crotch and doing like this. And they were like, yeah, we, we can't have you doing that from now that's on. Not gonna, that's not gonna pass censorship. They're, they're gonna like <laughs> pixelate it or something. <laughs>